Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are starting the VPC uh, follow along. And this is a, a very long section because we need to learn about all the kind of networking components that we can create. Uh, so we're going to learn how to create our own VPC, subnets, route tables, internet gateways, uh, security groups, NAT gateways, uh, NACLs. We're going to touch it all, okay? So it's very core to uh, learning about AWS, and it's just uh, great to get it out of the way. So let's jump into it. So um, let's start off by creating our own VPC. Uh, so on the left-hand side, I want you to click on your VPC. And right away, you're going to see that we already have a default VPC within this uh, region of North Virginia. Okay, your region might be different from mine. Um, it doesn't it actually it does kind of matter what region you use because uh, different regions have different uh, uh, different amounts of available uh, uh, AZs. So I'm going to really strongly suggest that you switch to North Virginia uh, to make this, uh, this section a little bit uh, smoother for you. Um, but just notice that the default VPC uses an IPv4 CIDR, uh, CIDR block range of 172.31.0.0 forward slash uh, 16. Okay, and so if I was to change regions, no matter what region, we'll go to US West Oregon we're going to find that we already have a default VPC um, here as well. And it's going to have the same CIDR block uh, range, okay? So just be aware that AWS does give you a default VPC so that you can start launching resources immediately without having to worry about all this networking. And uh, there's no faux pas with using the default VPC. It's totally acceptable to do so, but uh, we definitely need to know how to do this ourselves. So we're going to create our own uh, VPC, okay? And so I'm a big fan of Star Trek, and so I'm going to name it after the planet of Bajor, which is a, a, a very well-known planet in the Star Trek universe. And I'm going to have to provide my own uh, CIDR block. It cannot be one that already exists, so I can't use that 172 um, uh, range that... Uh, uh, AWS was using. So I'm going to do 10.0.0.0 forward slash uh, 16. And there is a bit of a, a rhyme and rhythm to choosing these. This one is a very commonly uh, chosen one. Uh, and so, I mean, you might be looking at this going, okay, well, what is this whole thing with the IP address slash uh, forward 16? And we will definitely explain that uh, in a, a separate video here. But just to give you a quick rundown, you're choosing your IP address that you want to uh, have here. And this is the actual range. And this is saying how many IP IP addresses you want to allocate, okay? Um, so yeah, we'll cover that more later on. Um, and so now we have the option to set IPv6 uh, CIDR uh, or a uh, CIDR block here. And so just to keep it simple, I'm going to turn it off. But you know, um, obviously IPv6 is supported on AWS, and uh, it is the future of um, you know our our IP protocol. So it's definitely something you might want to turn on, okay, and just be uh, prepared for the future there. Then we have this tenancy option, and this is just going to give us a dedicated host um, for our VPC. This is an expensive expensive option, so we're going to leave it to default and go proceed and create our VPC. And so there it, it has been created. Created, and it was very fast. It was just instantaneous there. Uh, and so we're going to click through to that link there. And now um, we can see we have our VPC name Bajor. Uh, and I want you to notice that we have our IPv4 uh, CIDR range. There is no IPv6 set. And by default, it's going to uh, give us a, uh, a route table and a NACL, okay? Um, and so we are going to overwrite the route table because we're going to want to learn how to do that by ourselves. Knackles is not so uh, important, so I, we might uh, just gloss over that. But um, yeah, so there you are. Now there's just one more thing we have to do um, because if you look down below here, uh, we don't have uh, DNS resolution or DNS, or sorry, DNS host names is disabled by default. And so if we launch an EC2 instance, it's not going to get a, um, a, a DNS, uh, uh, DNS host name. And that's just like a URL so you can access that EC2 instance. We definitely want to turn that on. So I'm going to drop this down to actions and we're going to set uh, host names uh, here to enabled, okay? And so now we will get that and that will uh, not cause us pain later down the road. So now that we've uh, created our VBC, we want to actually uh, uh, make sure the internet can reach it. And so we're going to uh, next uh, learn about internet gateways. So um, we have our VBC, but it has no way to reach the internet. And so we're going to need an internet gateway. Okay, so on the left hand side, I want you to go to internet gateway. And uh, we are going to go ahead and create a new one, okay? And I'm just going to call it IG for Internet Gateway, uh, Bajor. Some people do IGW. We can do IGW. It doesn't hurt. Uh, and so our Internet Gateway has been created. And so we'll just click through to that one. 
Um, and so you're going to see that it's in a detached state. So internet gateways can only be attached to uh, a, a very specific VP, uh, VPC. It's a one-to-one -one relationship. So for every VPC, you're going to have an internet gateway. And so you can see it's attached and there is no VPC ID. So I'm going to drop this down and attach the VPC uh, and then select uh, Bajor there and attach it. And there you go. Now it's attached and we can see the uh, ID is associated. So we have an internet gateway, but that still doesn't mean that um, things within our network can reach the internet because we have to add a route to our, our route table, okay? So just closing this tab here, you can see that there already is a route table associated uh, with our VPC because it did create us a default route table. So I'm just gonna click through to that one here to show you, okay? And you can see that it's our main route table because it's set to main, but I want you to learn how to create route tables. So we're gonna make one uh, from scratch here, okay? So we'll just hit uh, create route table here. And we're just gonna name it our um, main uh, route table or our IG, our internet route table. I don't know, it doesn't matter. Okay, uh, maybe we'll just say RT um, to shorten that there. And we will drop down and choose Bajor and then we will go ahead and create that route table, okay? And so we'll just hit close and we will uh, click off here so we can see all of our route tables. And so here we have our our um, our main one here for, for Bajor, and then this is the one we created, okay? So if we click into this route table here, uh, you can see by default it has um, the full scope of our local network here. Uh, and so I wanna show you how to change this one to our, our main. So we're just going to um, click on this one here and switch it over to main. So set it as main route table. So the main route table is whenever, um, uh, you know, it's just what is going to be used by default. All right. And so we'll just go ahead and delete the uh, default one here now because we no longer need it. All right. And we will go select our, our new one here and edit our routes. And we're going to add one for the internet gateway here. So I'm going to just drop down here or sorry, I'm just going to write in 0, .0, .0, .0, 0, 0 forward slash zero, which means uh, let's take take anything from anywhere there. And then we're gonna drop down, select Internet Gateway, select Bajor and hit Save Routes. Okay, and we'll hit Close. And so now we uh, we have a Internet Gateway and we have a way for um, our subnets to reach the internet. So there you go. So now that we have a route to the internet, it's time to uh, create some subnets so we have some way of actually launching our EC2 instances uh, somewhere, okay? So on the left-hand side, I want you to go to subnets. And right away, you're gonna to start to see some uh, subnets here. These are the default ones created with you with your default VPC. Uh, and you can see that there's exactly six of them. So there's exactly one for every availability zone within each uh, region. So the North Virginia has six uh, AZs. So you're gonna have uh, six uh, public subnets, okay? The reason we know these are public subnets, if we were to uh, click on one here and check the auto assign, it is set to uh, yes. So if a if this is set to yes, that means any EC2 instance launched in the subnet is going to get a public IP address. Hence, it, it's going to be um, considered a public subnet, okay? So if we were to switch over to Canada Central, because I just want to make a point here that if you are in another region, it's going to have a different amount of availability zones. Canada only has two, which is a bit sad. We would love to have a third one there. But you're going to see that we have exactly one subnet for every availability zone. So we're going to switch back to North Virginia here. And we are going to proceed to create our own subnet. So we're going to want to create at least three uh, subnets if we can. Uh, so because the reason why is a lot of companies, especially enterprise companies, have to run it in at least three availability zones for high availability. Because if uh, you know one goes out and you only have another one, but what happens if two goes out? So there's that rule of you know always have at least um, you know two additionals. Okay, so. We're gonna create three public subnets and one uh, one private subnet. We're not gonna create three private subnets just because I don't wanna be making subnets here all day, but we'll just get to it here. So we're gonna create our first subnet. I'm gonna name this uh, Bajor uh, Public okay. A, all right. And we're gonna select our VPC and uh, we're gonna just choose the US East 1A and we're gonna give it a CIDR uh, block of 10.0.0.0 forward slash 24. Now notice this CIDR range is a smaller than the one up here. I know the number is larger, but from the perspective of how many IP addresses it allocates, there's actually a fewer here. So you are taking a slice of the pie from uh, the larger range here. So just be aware, you can't set this as 16. It's always gonna be less, and less, and by less, I mean a higher number uh, than a 16, okay? So we'll go ahead and create our first uh, public subnet here. We'll just hit close. 
And um, this is not by default public because by default, the auto assign is going to be set to no. So we're just gonna go up here and modify this and set it uh, so that it, it, it does auto assign to IPv4. And now it is, is considered a public subnet. So we're gonna go ahead and do that for um, our B and C here. So it's gonna be the same thing. Bajor um, public uh, B, okay, choose that, uh, we'll do B. We'll do 10.0.1.024, okay? And we're gonna go create that, hit close. Um, and we're going to then auto assign that there, all right? And the next thing we're gonna do is create our next subnet here. So Bajor, how boring, eh? Bajor um, public uh, C. And we will do that and we'll go to C here and it's gonna be 10.0.2.0 forward slash 24. Okay, we'll create that one. Okay, we'll hit close and we will make sure, did I set that one? Yes, I did. Um, did I set that one? Not as of yet. And so we will modify that there, okay. And we will create a, another subnet here and this is gonna be a Bajor um, private A, okay. And we are going to set that to A here. Um, and we are going to set this to 10.0.3.024, uh, okay? And so this is gonna be our private subnet, all right? So we've created all of our subnets. So the next thing we need to do is associate them with a, a row table. Actually, we don't have to because by default, it's going to use the main. All right, so it, they're already automatically associated there. But for our private one, we're not going to be wanting to really use the um, the 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 main uh, route table there. We probably would want to create our own route table uh, for uh, our private subnets there. So I'm just going to create a new one here, and we're going to just call it private RT. Um, okay, we're going to drop that down. Choose Bajor here. And we're gonna hit close, okay? And the idea is that the, you know, we don't need the subnet to reach the internet, so it doesn't really make sense to be there. And then we could set um, other things later on, okay? So what I want you to do is just change the association here. So we're gonna just edit the route table association, and we're just going to change that uh, to be our private one, okay? And so now our route tables are set up. Um, so we will move on to the next step.